to respond to such a, I don't know how they're going to do it, though, because you, it takes years to train somebody. They want to look, they, well, what they're doing is they're, they're, they have to think out of the box. Whatever they did before is not working. It's like the, the fact in business or science or anything. If you keep doing what you did yesterday, you'll have what you have today. We have a nuclear waste site that in the initial comments we had from IMELT, the head of GE, we're going to rebuild and get operational at Fukushima. He's standing literally on a nuclear waste depot. It, it, this is not a nuclear plant anymore. This is a danger. This is an open nuclear wound to the entire planet. And this moron, actually, our so-called uh, business czar appointed by the idiot uh, Obama, uh, he shouldn't be czar of anything. He should be basically inside a padded room playing with his toys. Yeah, well, but he shouldn't be playing with nuclear reactors or telling us lives like this thing is going to get solved by not thinking out of the box. We need to have real out of the box people with lots of money to do this properly before they poison the entire northern hemisphere. Well, just as disappointing is uh, Chu from the Department of Energy's uh, standpoint also, for, for a lot of reasons. So I won't tell, tell us about that. To tell us about this. Well, he's, he has offered uh, little in the way of leadership, and also I would expect a little more coming, you know, from... from How is his name folks. spelled? How, this is the, is the Department of Energy. What's the DOA director's name spelled like? C-H-U. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. And the same thing goes from the NRC. The chairman of the NRC Safety Committee basically made a report sounded very similar to yourself and Joe and other members of your nuclear safety team. Yep. But then the entire rest of the committee said, no, no, we don't agree with the head committee chairman. It's like, what? You people are playing games with your sharp pencils again. You need to stop sharpening pencils and think you can play a media game and the people will just go away. I saw the protests here two days ago in the news from Japan, and they were saying, and there were tens of thousands of people marching in Tokyo saying, no more Fukushima. No more Fukushima. They don't want some nuclear plants to go. They want them all gone. Well, you know, along that same line, Siemens just announced yesterday or the day before that they're pulling out of the nuclear business. And, you know, since there's a lot of components made by them, including heavy equipment like turbines and all, that's going to be a pretty major uh, blow to the... Look, uh, anybody invest... That hasn't been affected. And that has to do with Germany's uh, decision right. to pull back. Right. What will happen is the investors that put the money and stocks into the nuclear industry will pull the heck out of it. And even if there's a shell left, there'll be no money to develop anything. Now, here's the problem with that. We're heading into a time in the 21st century where we need to stop polluting the oceans because we're killing the ability for the oceans and the, and the plants. We're cutting down the forests in South America to generate oxygen. Yes, the Earth can generate more oxygen if you put in more CO2. It's not like these fools try to say that man is generating CO2 and it's going to kill the planet. But what happens is the, fu the future does include nuclear, and eventually it'll be nuclear fusion energy, if they release this classified technology, but we have alternative technologies. We can make buckyball filtration systems. We can do things that convert nuclear plants that are dangerous on fault lines into natural gas. But this idea of cutting off money and of the, the whole business going bye-bye, it actually makes it more dangerous rather than less because they leave these plants in a state of disarray with no increased safety in the middle of earth changes. Great. And we're back with our amazing guest, Chris Harris. And, of course, if you think that the Fukushima thing's going away, we're monitoring and tracking, by the way, the, uh, the issue of smart meters. Please stop sending me tons and tons of emails. Listen to every show that I do on the Genesis Network. Once a month, usually maybe twice a month, I'll be on for half an hour, an hour on rents, and I'll give an update here. But this is where you want to get the information. Uh, You'll see it posted up. Don't ask me every little detail about this or that, about how to get rid of your smart meters. you got to listen. you got to check the reports yourself, and you got to follow through. The lawsuit will be moving forward. I'm doing the lawsuit at my expense, and at some later date it'll be, it'll be being reprocessed by hopefully the Imart legal group out of Phoenix to turn into a class action. There is no class action in other countries. If you want a class action in Canada, New Zealand, or elsewhere, use our boilerplates once they're posted up. Uh, but I'm not going to answer everybody's questions. I'm getting a zillion emails asking me little details about this and that, and I'm getting swapped. I will not return your emails, okay? I'm not going to, because there's too many. It's not possible. You've got to listen. You've got to pick up the ball, and you've got to run yourself. Just like I tell people, get a radiation detector. Get something to clean your water. Be prepared for a disaster. If uh, this uh, 
Fukushima Prefecture goes, imagine that, say, in Tennessee or in Oklahoma or some other place in the central United States or along the fault lines or Diablo Canyon up in uh, California or here in San Onofre where there's a subduction zone. They want to spend $21.5 million to tell us they're going to test to make sure it's still safe enough to relicense it so they can. They need to convert those plants to natural gas. And I'm not against nuclear. I'm against nuclear the way that it's done everywhere on the planet now. Unsafe, venting off tritium and radioisotopes, no proper safety procedures, no backup power systems, no redundancy in the system. Power grid is a piece of trash, which was proved again two Fridays ago, where the somebody with a few keystrokes and, a, and monitoring equipment blew it for six million people in Southern California, Arizona, New Mexico, all the way down to Baja, California. So with the Fukushima thing and my radiation detector and the hair on the back of my head has been going up the last three weeks thinking that I'm looking at my wife's dresser and seeing this this meter going into the high 60s again that pisses me off that's the medical term for it I am very pissed off I'm pissed off that I now know I when I got this email this morning we're gonna have another radiation cloud come because this president sitting in his flip-flops in the blue room with his gay lover Reggie Love is sitting behind the Oval Office doing nothing except reviewing blogs about people that don't worship him anymore and the DNC doesn't like him anymore and they're trying to silence those people in the Democratic Party that even want to have primaries to see if they can challenge the fool who will probably lose the election and destroy the party. Well the fact is while Rome is burning the nation is getting radioactive we're not dealing with possible Fukushima's here in America as you said in the break uh, Chris I want you to repeat this because in 2007 you were part of a special team actually looking at a, quote, terrorist activity against a nuclear plant, but you don't need to invoke terrorism. And I don't buy the idea that there was a nuclear terrorism against, by like, Korea against Japan. Uh, I don't see any evidence, although I know they can do it, that this is triggered off because there's hundreds of earthquakes every month, five or greater in Japan. They're on Earthquake Central, Tsunami Central, and it's not surprising that we, don't, we have another risk that there could be another tsunami strikes and die. We have a typhoon hitting there, so people need to grow up and stop making theories where there's no supporting evidence for it and realize it's actually more dangerous that the earth changes are driving it, not a nut with a button pushing it, causing a, a nuclear weapon to cause a tsunami. It's more dangerous realizing the earthquake changes that are going to occur along New Madrid or across off the coast of California or up near Diablo Canyon are going to blow our nuclear reactors and make us a zone of alienation like the Russians and the Ukrainians around Chernobyl, hundreds of thousands of square miles that only mutant mice live there. Your comments, Chris? Yeah, what we looked at was basically anything that can cause some kind of damage and in different segments of, of the plant being uh, obliterated by whatever, you know, and the Fukushima event certainly fit right on in with that. So it didn't have to be, you know, it didn't have to be uh, man-made, artificial. Was, the natural events were also included in that. What would you do? And that's when I, you know, that's, that was the, the big killer of Fukushima was they couldn't even get equipment in. And that's, that was the most fearful part because most of our, most of our analyses included uh, something coming in, assets coming in from the outside, be it they, be it fire trucks, uh, mobile generators, something, you know, something that you can get in within an hour. And at Fukushima, the roads were so damaged and all, and there were mudslides everywhere, which can happen from a typhoon too, by the way, and uh, they were impassable. Uh, you get an earthquake and knock all the bridges out that are, are, are even little small bridges and overpasses down and you can't get something through that you might need. So it clearly, we, we said, you know, you need something on site in diverse locations where if you wipe out this section of the site, you still have this also. Yeah, in other words, you need a dedicated cable to run, for example, if it's uh, down in an area that could be flooded, where you have a dedicated power source running to higher ground that may be a mile or so away. Same way as it with Sendai, Japan. They should have had power generation with cables running, say, 10 miles inland or 5 miles. If you actually went there and visited, and I've talked to people who have, if you go at a certain point, the debris field stops, and you look around and say, if you closed your eyes and turned around, you'd think, well, nothing happened here. But you turn around and you see the entire area from that area to the coast completely turned into like a blender. Uh, people need to grasp this, that, that if they simply had a power source inland, most of what happened in Fukushima wouldn't have happened. That's right, you know, and so even and even still, there were there have been ways to hook up some power, you know, if if they had it. And I'll tell you something else too. 
that, that was like the perfect storm of all events that I could think of because even some of the power distribution system inside the plant itself would have precluded getting power to the right equipment. And you would have to, would, but that, even that's not insurmountable. There would have been pre-planned ways of getting... Uh, yeah, you always have to have redundancy. You have to do what I call the NASA thing, the redundancy. But we don't see that. We don't see redundancy. We don't see it in our power grid in America or Europe or elsewhere. We don't see redundancy in safety systems. And they need that. I mean, the same way as we need to have not only, you know, charcoal filter systems, which is all they have in these plants, we need to have engineered, not only for our nuclear plants, but our, our troops working overseas and our tanks and our personnel carriers, buckyball filter tanks that can filter out chemicals and radioisotopes because you're in an area of depleted uranium munitions. I mean, how crazy it is we have our troops sucking up air that's going to kill them a few months or years later, and the same way with these nuclear plants. You can't have nuclear plants vet off radioisotopes, but the future is going to include nuclear. As much as we have lots of energy, you mm -hmm. can't get away from the fact there's going to be some nuclear, and part of it is just decommissioning the current plants or switching the technology to something safer with better filters because this just doesn't make sense what they're doing. And cutting off the money or letting the, the industry fall apart because everybody's going to run for nuclear and not put the money into either even properly decommission them or turn them to natural gas, this is not only stupid, but it's dangerous. Right. Well, when Siemens decided to pull out, that's a, that's a major uh, a hit on the barometer of the health of the, of the industry because uh, they are deeply entrenched in the industry. You know, once, once they disappear... All of the, it's electrical components, it's uh, instrumentation, it's all kinds of things. You know, right now, probably, I, if I were at a plant right this minute, which uh, after 30 years I'm not anymore, uh, I, and I was in the warehouse, I'd be scrambling to get spare parts while they still exist. Exactly when, and they're now. still qualified from Siemens if I still needed them, you know, that, things like that. Yeah, that's, so, not good. that's not a good uh, outcome, too, because we were talking about trying to, to decommission this, this what we call reactor waste site it's going to take decades. They have no end in sight because no one's actually thinking out of the box with billions of dollars in their pocket to fix the problem. No, there's, it's, it's not. You know, and uh, you know, we talked about okay. redundancy and equipment and all. And, and really, let me just define that for one minute. You know, we were analyzed for a certain amount, a goodly amount of events. You know, and that's the inside the box kind of thinking. You know, anything that we need, we have redundancy. Yes, we can handle this. But once we're talking about an external event the size of Fukushima or potentially even a North Anna, you know, you start talking about, you know, remember, remember they were on their uh, diesels for a little while, and what happened? One of the diesels tripped, or they had to take it off because it, it didn't even work, you know, so now you're down to three so, instead of four. So there's even redundancy there, but it gets awful thin, let me tell you yeah, what. Yeah, yeah, it's a very thin uh, line, in, in other words, before disaster. We come back, we'll go over some of the reports that you posted, and I'm going to have posted up on uh, Nutra Medical and Clay and Iron. Expert challenge uh, urges checks of reactor interiors. TEPCO should ensure cooling methods are effective and no more critical locality in the fuel. In other words, critical events are happening. Welcome back, and uh, over the weekend I visited uh, with my daughter Disneyland, which is my daughter's favorite place to go, and of course Tinkerbell's her favorite. Uh, the fact is that uh, if we look at these uh, issues, uh, if we look at these issues of what's going on there, let's think out of the box. I'm going to do some Imagineering just like we're in Disneyland. Now, Imagineering, first off, people say, well, you can't put a regular robot there unless you put them at some long cables and so on. Yes, you can. You can put what's called a robot with a I triple prime E chip from Atmel Corporation. It's a ferromagnetic chip in its brain, and you can actually encase it in depleted uranium that will prevent a lot of the radiation from affecting the chip as well. Secondly, you can have what's called remote sensing and transfer uh, technology, and the U.S. military has this in DARPA, where you can actually have someone inside a robot remotely visiting through uh, cameras, etc., at the site, and actually physically removing because you need something that has literally the capacity, not just a big shovel to pick up the debris, but a large robot with extreme strength that can actually do this. So you need one or more of these. Se secondly, you need to start tunneling underneath this area. You should be creating a moat around it. They should have done it in extreme moat, maybe even as much as a mile away from the site, and then build mother moats, and then build...